wow. grandstanding, whining misrepresentation of secular humanism and cancel culture that I've ever heard. Here's a thought experiment. Imagine there's a company called Pleasure Inc. and they invent the pleasure machine. You strap a person in, pull down the virtual reality helmet, plug in a few diodes into the skull that tap into the pleasure centers of the brain. You pull the switch and then pure unadulterated bliss. The brain implants and the VR are so powerful that any pleasurable experience you want to have, you can have it. You can satisfy basic bodily pleasures, but the tech is so advanced that you can simulate any desire. You want to vacation on the beach with supermodels? No problem. You want to travel the world and sample cuisine from every region? No problem. Every form of pleasure and entertainment is now at your fingertips. The pleasure machine comes on market and is heavily advertised. People start using it for recreation on the weekends, but the machine works too well. People can't get themselves off of it. Eventually, pleasure machine users are strapped in for 10, 15, even 20 hours a day. They can't stop using it. The constant supply of dopamine is too much to resist. Before the pleasure machine, people had time for their extended families. People would get together with aunts, uncles, cousins. If you had elderly parents, you would take care of them. If you had grandparents, you could spend time with them. But as more people get hooked on the pleasure machine, there's no time for extended family. And let's be honest, what's more fun, fulfilling any fantasy or sitting and talking with grandma? As the pleasure machine continues to spread, the whole concept of extended family dies off. People only have time for their spouse and their kids, but even this nuclear family gradually becomes too much of a burden. The only thing that people want to do is to plug themselves in. Over time, pleasure machines get a bad reputation for disrupting families and sales start to drop. Pleasure Inc. Realize it, it realizes it needs a new strategy. First of all, let's improve the machine so that people don't have to worry about unplugging themselves to eat. Anything the body needs biologically can now be supplied by the machine so that hypothetically you can stay plugged in nonstop. Second, let's get the government to subsidize the machines. We want to make sure that anyone who wants a pleasure machine can afford to get one, even if it takes government assistance. Third, more aggressive marketing techniques are needed. People who oppose the pleasure machine say that it destroys marriage, destroys families. Now they're even saying it destroys cultures and religions because maintaining culture or religious traditions requires people to make an effort, to work hard, to make personal sacrifices, not to mention maintain bonds with others. How can you do any of that if you're strapped into a pleasure machine for most of the hours of the day? In the beginning, religious people used the machines, and then sometimes they'd miss prayers, sometimes they'd miss going to church. Then they start missing major holidays, like fasting in Ramadan and other important cultural uh, communal rituals. So the opponents of the pleasure machines now claim that the product not only destroys marriage, family, and culture, but also community and religion. How do we counter that in our marketing? Well, it's hard to deny the accusation, so let's embrace it. Let's tell people that the pleasure machine is actually liberating people from the shackles. Marriage, family, community, and religion are all sources of so much toil and headache. Why bother with that when you can enjoy limitless pleasure? The pleasure machine is the great liberator. Furthermore, marriage, family, and religion are the source of so much pain and suffering. Who doesn't have conflict with parents? Who doesn't have an insensitive spouse? Who doesn't feel judged when going to church or the mosque? To make matters worse, these institutions are also rife with abuse. There's domestic abuse, child abuse, abuse in the church and the mosque. Also, these institutions are rife with unjust hierarchies and inequality and lack of consent. The pleasure machine, on the other hand, is the great equalizer. When you're strapped in, you can enjoy yourself as much as the elites. Everyone is equal in the pleasure machine. This is the marketing we need to push through TV, movies, music, books, social media. And if anyone opposes our product, we simply accuse them of being backwards, irrational, and filled with hate. How can you reject liberation and equality? Are you a fan of domestic abuse? Are you a fan of child molestation, of white supremacy, of religious bigotry? What are you, some kind of terrorist? Pleasure Inc. realizes that the older generations are going to be wiser and won't be the biggest advocates of their product because they have more life experience and know the value of life unplugged. So Pleasure Inc. focuses on the younger generations with targeted ads on TikTok and elsewhere. Pleasure Inc. also wants its message of equality and liberation to re reach youth in schools. Let's make sure that all schools raise awareness about the benefits of using the pleasure machine and how not using it can cause pain and suffering in life. 
Adoption of the pleasure machine continues to spread at rapid pace and Pleasure Inc. decides to break into new markets internationally. The only problem is many countries are banning the pleasure machine. They don't want their societies being disrupted, their cultures and religions being wiped out with the introduction of this technology. But due to heavy lobbying, Pleasure Inc. has infiltrated every level of Western government and they leverage their connections to pass new international law. The new law is that every nation must allow their citizens to buy a pleasure machine. Not only that, but mu every nation must subsidize the pleasure machine to make it available to every citizen. This is a more imperative. Why? Because the pleasure machine, as we know, is the great liberator and the great equalizer. If nations don't facilitate access to the pleasure machine, that's a violation of human rights. Every human must have access to the pleasure machine and only the most evil totalitarian regimes would keep their people under the boot by not letting them entertain every single desire. Despite the new international laws, some rogue nations continue to resist. These nations are portrayed as terrorists and human rights violators in the media. The news shows images of little children covered in dirt, little girls crying. Look at these poor suffering children. What kind of evil monsters would prevent these precious darlings from using the pleasure machine? We need to impose sanctions on these countries. Even if half the population dies off due to starvation, that's a price we're willing to pay to make sure the other half of the population gets access to the pleasure machine. And if these terrorists still refuse, we'll just have to use military intervention. We don't want to use bombs and tanks, but that's the price for spreading freedom. Once we've liberated the nations with the gift of the pleasure machine, we have to make sure terror groups don't revolt so we can install puppet dictators who brutally stifle any dissent and make sure access to pleasure machines remain uninterrupted. It's also critical that we enforce anti-extremism laws. The opponents of the pleasure machine advocate traditional institutions of marriage, family, gender, community, religion. We have to silence these agitators by labeling them as extremist hate mongers that inspire violence. We can put them on watch lists, ban them from travel, maybe even indefinitely detain them on spurious charges. Now, we don't want to stifle all debate about the pleasure machine, of course. That might make us look too obviously totalitarian. So let's allow people to debate the pleasure machine, but in a controlled fashion. We'll set up two sides of the debate. The progressives will argue that people need to use the pleasure machine 24 hours a day. The closed-minded, old-fashioned conservatives will argue, no, 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 24 hours a day is degeneracy. People should only plug themselves into the pleasure machine for 18 hours a day, like the good old days. The pleasure machine continues to proliferate until every person is plugged in nonstop. The technology also advances so that a bulky machine is not needed. The tech can actually be implanted into the body. The last remaining resistors say that this is the end of the human race. Human life as it was known for millennia is over and even the human body has been transformed into a transhumanist abomination. All humans are now subjugated by this all controlling totalitarian system. But Pleasure Inc. scoffs at all this and says, how could we be totalitarian when we give people everything they desire. Sure, people can't change the overall system and we impose it on them by brute force, but that's okay because it's all for the greater good. So that's the metaphor. The pleasure machine is the secular humanist ideal. Human life should be structured around the individual pursuit of happiness and pleasure. This requires liberating people from all social norms and obligations because our obligations to others hinder our individual happiness. Technology can be used to free us from these obligations and facilitate our individual happiness. The pleasure machine represents this taken to its logical conclusion. Every time humanists tell people to throw off their obligations to others in favor of pursuing individual happiness, they're essentially pushing the pleasure machine. What, what is also a part of the metaphor is that the pleasure machine is not pushed onto people by telling them they must obey. Rather, it's pushed by saying, enjoy yourself, be free. The people who want to control you, they are the ones who say, obey. But we say, enjoy yourself. Aren't we so much better? This is, is exactly what secular humanists say to Islam. But the reality is secular humanism is a totalitarian system of liberation and equality that has been imposed on the entire world. It's a system that gradually and I emphasize this, gradually destroys basic human institutions like marriage, family, community, religion, and ultimately the human race itself. And whoever resists it is, con is considered a fundamental extremist who must be brought to heel. Islam also cares about individual human happiness. 
But Islam sets limits because there are other institutions and norms worth preserving. Institutions of marriage, family, community, religion, and the human race itself. This is why it is far better than secular humanism. Thank you very much for that opening, Daniel. Folks, if you're watching, I want to remind you, DebateCon 4 is coming up this November 4th in Dallas, Texas. You don't want to miss it. Check out the description box for the link for that conference. And if you're from far away across the globe, hit subscribe as we'll be streaming all of those debates live for the public. With that, we're going to jump into open dialogue. Gentlemen, the floor is all yours. I didn't know secular humanism was a totalitarian. What? Oh, I thought somebody said something. So a totalitarian regime. I need to call my, uh, well, I don't actually have stocks, but if I had somebody who's managing my stocks, I'd want to call and put in an order on straw and oil because we are currently out of straw after that straw man and oil after it got pushed down that slippery slope in what has to be the biggest grandstanding whining misrepresentation of secular humanism and cancel culture that I've ever heard. Cancel culture, by the way, is the real whine here, but it's not about canceling, it's about accountability. And it seems strange to call secular humanism as, oh, it's just about pleasure and everything else. And if you dare to say something like, it's okay to, for to, to forcibly marry a four-year-old, they're just gonna call you awful. They're gonna say, are you a child predator? It's okay. It's okay. We don't need to cancel anything. We don't need to ban the pleasure machine. The pleasure machine will either kill us off or climate change will, or work out ourselves. If you enjoyed that especially juicy clip, don't forget to hit subscribe so the algorithm knows what to serve you more of.